Hi, I'm John from Fluxu, and today we are going to use databases and integration via web services and Zapier to connect Fluxu to other applications. Well, first of all, we can create in Fluxu a database to store information or to share information between processes that are automated in our platform. So, for example, we can have a product database to store the information about the beer that we sell. In this case, we have three columns and a few kinds of beer. One relevant feature in the databases is that we can upload information using this feature from a CSV file. So for example, if you have your product in your ERP or in your Excel file, you can export them to a CSV file and then import the full list of products into Fluxu using this feature. And you can also create or modify your database. For example, in this case, let's say that we want to edit the database to add some information for the beers. In this case, we have the product name, the product owner, the unit price, and we can add a new column. In this case, the size of the bottle. I mean, because if it is beer, it makes sense to know the size. And in this case, it will be an integer number. Let's say it is in milliliters. And that's all. As easy as that, we have added a column to the database. So now, as you can see, our database has all the columns that it had, but we add the size of the bottle. So we are going to complete. For example, this bottle is 500 milliliters. This is 400, and this is a bigger. This is nine, and this is 60. And that's all. We have our product databases with the size of the bottle. And where do you use databases? Well, let's create a new process. In this case, I will start from scratch and I will create <coughs> a process to receive beer orders. And I will add a text field here with a name of the customer and another field with the email of the customer, email of the customer, and I will add a table here. But this table will be, will hold the information of all the beers that the customer wants. So I will name the, the table beers order. And I will say that this table will have a column with the name of the beer, another column with the unit price, another column with the quantity that the customer wants to order from this beer, and the quantity will be a decimal, the unit price will be a money, and I will calculate a subtotal that will be also money. And here comes the interesting thing. The name of the beer won't be text, but it will be a database combo. And I will set up this combo saying that it will take the values from the products database and from the product name column of this database. Not only this, but I will also trigger that when I choose the beer name, then the unit price from the database will be put in the unit price of the table. Okay, so the customer will choose the beer and the unit price will be taken from the database. And I will automatically calculate the subtotal as the unit price 
multiplied by the quantity, and that's all. Okay. And then, for example, I can add a calculated field here to calculate the order total, and it will be the sum of the table beers order and the column subtotal. And that's it. We have a form to receive orders that takes the option from a database. So I will just end this process just to show you very quickly. Please watch the other videos to see all the logic for the process modeling and the BPM notation. I will keep it simple because in this video, I want to focus on databases and integration with other systems. So now I will click the green button that makes the magic. So when I click it, this process is ready to be used. So I will go to my inbox and I will launch a new process that will be the beer order. And please see, but now I have the form that we define, for example, the name of the customer, you know, him, him at acme.com. And here I can choose the name of the beer, but this is a combo that takes the options from the database that we define. So for example, we have here the Tincho draft beer and it, brings the unit price automatically. And if I change the name of the beer, the unit price change. The quantity, for example, in this case is 12, and it calculates the subtotal. I can add a record, and for example, in this case, I will add a sofa beer, that it is a little more expensive, should be better, and the quantity and the subtotal, and we have our form integrated with a database. Okay, great. Well done. I can submit and this beer order is created in Flux. So well now let's say let's say that you want this order to be pushed into another system. So we can go to my process. Let's get back to the beer order process. And now we can go to the process workflow. And instead of ending the process, once we have received the order, we want to invoke a web service. So I will add this special task that it is not a user task. I mean, it is not assigned to a human being, but it is assigned to a system. In this case, I will use, for example, a REST web service. In this case, I can specify the information for the REST web service in order to push the information into another system. In this case, for example, create order in ERP, and I can specify the URL of the web service. So I, I, I need to write it down. Now, my ERP.com, blah, 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 blah. And I can here pass the parameters. For example, I can say that one of the parameters is the customer name. And this value will be taken from the name of the customer field of our form. And then we can add, for example, the products that will be taken from the Beers order, I mean the table will be passed using a JSON in a JSON format. And for example, I can also send the order total just as a verification, the order total. So Foxo will invoke this web service and will pass all this information to web service. If the web service returns some information, it will be in the output. So in the output, we can define the parameter name for the web service. And we can store this response in a field of our form. Okay, so in this case, for example, in the summary. 
we can specify the request he headers and that's all. So the process now will receive the order and then we'll create the order in the ERP using the web service. Another option that we can do, for example, once the order is created in the ERP, we can populate a database in Fluxu, for example, to store historical information. Again, I can use another service task here, and I can see it, say that it will be a service task using a database, for example, to add a new record in a Fluxu database. And in this case, I can choose the database. I have all the database defined and which information with the same criteria. I mean, in the table of the database, I can add the information from a form field. And the other option that is very interesting is that you can add a Sapier integration. In this case, if you choose Sapier, then you can invoke mostly any other web application in the world. This is very useful because Sapier is like a universal connector. So if you add this Sapier integration, what will happen is that Fluxu, when reach this point of the process, will invoke Sapier, will create a SAP. A SAP in Sapier is an execution of, a, of the connection. So you can send information from Fluxu to Google Drive, Dropbox, Twitter, Facebook, Salesforce. Most of the web applications in the world have a Sapier connector. So you can send information from Fluxu via Sapier to those applications. There are specific posts in our knowledge base telling you how to do it. But I wanted to mention that it, the, the other way is also possible. So for example, if you, if you have an event in Twitter, Facebook, Salesforce, you can trigger a SAP and send this information to Fluxu, for example, to create a process instant in Fluxu. So you can have bidirectional communication with any other web application you should say. So in sum, in this short video, we created and we use databases to populate information and we integrate our processes with other applications using REST web services, using internal flux services and using Sapier to connect it with web applications. Thank you very much and let's see you on the next video. Bye-bye.